The two leaders said just now that they must make sure their relations do not veer into open conflict. There is more information being released at the talk. And Chinese President Xi Jinping said, I'm quoting, uh, that China is ready to move U.S.-China relations forward in a positive direction. U.S. President Joe Biden mentioned, I'm quoting again, common sense guardrails, common sense guardrails, and promised to address areas of concern, including human rights and other issues uh, in the Indo-Pacific region. The online meeting comes at a time we know of a fraught relations on issues like Taiwan, trade and technology between the uh, two countries. Uh, as the meeting goes, there will be more details, of course. As for the agenda, Taiwan is for sure on top of it, given the simmering tensions over the island. Uh, the Chinese foreign ministry earlier yesterday, to be exact, said that U.S. statements on Taiwan issue has gone out of shape and even backtracked. Trade, of course, is on the agenda. The two countries are still in a trade war, we know, since 2018, despite rounds of trade talks over the past few years. And the U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai uh, earlier vowed to take hard lines against China if Beijing doesn't change its trade practice. And Pandong technology, for sure, is also on the agenda. Since the trade war happened, uh, the U.S. has slammed sanctions on several Chinese tech companies, including tech giant Huawei, which is also the 5G leader. Uh, there could be some progress in this regard, as, uh, as I talked to some experts just now. And again, we, we have to wait for that. Security in the Indo-Pacific region is another topic. And we know under the framework of AUKUS, Australia will have nuclear power submarine. China is really worried that this could be a move against it in the South China Sea. And of course, uh, pandemic cooperation should be also on the agenda, given the pandemic is still rampant across the world. There will be loads of differences uh, they need to sort out and settle. Of course, the two presidents meeting, according to experts I talked to, may not alter the status quo, but talking is a good sign at this point. And the U.S. wants fair trade with China and doesn't hope China uh, will overtake its role as the world's leader. Uh, what China wants is mutual respect, urging the U.S. not to interfere in China's internal affairs. And of course, China aims to express the view that the new type of major power relationship is based on mutual respect and it should be a new normal. And the two countries have some common interests, especially on climate issues. And uh, Biden, uh, before the meeting, signed the bipartisan infrastructure bill into law. And the U.S. may need China in this future expansionary fiscal policy. So based on the high-level talks in the past year, we can see that they're willing to talk and work on differences, but it takes time. Pandong. Well, now let's go to Washington, D.C. Uh, Nathan, how about the U.S. side? Yeah, I just want to give you a bit of color, by the way. Of course, the uh, meeting between the two heads of state, very important, but it's not just them. This is essentially a summit in all but the fact that they're not in the same room. Weeks of preparation. And uh, on, on uh, the U.S. side, it's not just the president, uh, Joe Biden, but also Secretary of State Anthony Blinken joining the virtual meeting. We have uh, the, the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, Janet Yellen, uh, the Treasury Secretary. The same for Beijing, Yang Jiechi, uh, Wang Yi. Uh, top diplomat, foreign minister, of course, uh, and of course, Liu He, uh, one of the main trade negotiators, of course, for the phase one trade deal. Um, in terms of optics, it was actually a lot warmer at the beginning than I expected. Uh, President Xi calling Joe Biden an old friend, uh, and Joe Biden saying he'd like to meet in person next time. Well, maybe we could have an opportunity in the next few months. Uh, you never know. Uh, there are some things going on in China, as we know, uh, at the beginning of next year. Um, so even though uh, both of them are staking out their positions, which we know, for example, from the Alaska meetings back in March, the meetings that we, we've had uh, between uh, uh, Wang Yi and Jake Sullivan in Zurich recently. But what we're really looking for here is some sort of change of tone, some sort of trust building between these two leaders who know each other very well. Hence President Xi's old friend reference to Joe Biden. They met eight times before he came president, only two phone calls uh, since he did. Um, so, you know, China felt very upset, obviously, with the finger pointing over COVID. That has died down. Uh, you only had to see the body language between the two climate negotiators in Glasgow to understand that the US and China, when they do come together, can get a deal over the line when it comes to uh, COP26 in Glasgow. So there are areas. But, you know, these red lines, uh, especially for Beijing when it comes to Taiwan, the real fear, of course, is that the one China policy is dead in all but name, especially with the presence of US military trainers, the arms sales, the increased uh, traffic through the Taiwan Strait. And there is a real uh, need to get reaffirmation on, uh, as uh, was said, sovereignty issues, uh, mutual respect before this relationship can warm.